Random variables are the ones whose possible values are uncertain. Specifically, if we have a random event, such as flipping a coin or rolling a dice or forecasting future returns, random variables quantify the outcomes of these random events. Unlike a regular variable that takes some certain value, random variable can take many many different values with different probabilities. Let's define a random variable z that can be used to quantify the outcomes of a random event such as a coin flip. z takes a value of 1 if heads and 0 if tails. There are two types of random variables, discrete random variables that can take certain distinct values and continuous random variables that can take any value within an interval. Here is an example of discrete random variable. x equals to outcome of rolling a dice. x can take one of the following six values. It cannot take any value between let's say 3 and 4. In this case, x is a discrete random variable. Let's consider a different random variable y which is equal to the future returns generated by a stock of apple. In this case, the random variable y can take any real number and hence y is a continuous random variable. The major difference between the discrete and continuous random variables is that we can list the outcome of a discrete random variable while there is no possible way to list all of the potential values for a continuous random variable. Let's go back to our coin flip random event. Let's see what is the probability of getting a head in the coin flip. We can get head in one of the two outcomes and hence the probability of random variable z equals to 1 is half. Let's see how we can describe a probability distribution. Define a random variable x equals to the number of heads after three flips of a fair coin. We could have one of the following eight possible outcomes. Probability of x equals to zero, or in other words, probability of getting zero heads during the three flips of a fair coin equals to one out of eight, or one eighth. Probability of x equals to one, or probability of getting exactly one head during the three coin flips equals to three eighths. Similarly, probability of x equals to 2 equals to 3 eighths and probability of x equals to 3 or probability of getting exactly one head after three flips of a fair coin equals to 1 eighth. Now let's introduce the concept of expected value. The expected value of a random variable is a probability weighted average of all of the possible outcomes of the random variable. Let's continue our example of the random variable x which is equal to number of heads after three flips of a fair coin. Let's list all of the possible outcomes and the payoffs associated with each of the outcome. Now let's weight the payoffs with the associated probabilities. Finally, add all of the probability weighted outcomes to get the expected payoff. So the expected payoff from a coin flip game for getting at least one head in three flips is $250. Let's now apply these concepts to a real world financial problem. The earnings of Bancorp are interest rate sensitive, benefiting from a declining interest rate environment. Suppose there is a 60% probability that Bancorp will operate in a declining interest rate environment in the current fiscal year and a 40% probability that it will operate in a stable interest rate environment. If a declining interest rate environment occurs, the probability that the EPS will be $2.60 is estimated at 25% and the probability that the EPS will be $2.45 is estimated at 75%. Note that 0.6, the probability of declining interest rate environment, times 0.25, the probability of $2.60 EPS given a declining interest rate environment equals to 0.15, which is the unconditional probability of the EPS of $2.60. Similarly, 0.6 times 0.75 or 0.45 is the unconditional probability of an EPS of $2.45. A stable interest rate environment points us to the node of the tree that branches off into outcomes of $2.20 and $2 of EPS. We can find the expected EPS given a declining interest rate environment as follows. Similarly, we can find the expected EPS given a stable interest rate environment as follows. Now we can calculate the overall expected EPS using the following equation. So in this equation, we already calculated the expected EPS given a declining interest rate environment of $2.4875. We also calculated the expected EPS given a stable interest rate environment to be $2.12. Probability of declining interest rate is already given as 60% and the probability of stable interest rate is given as 40%. 
Plugging in all of the numbers in the equation gives us the expected EPS of $2.34.